the message kind of fits for both. He can't afford another four years of Justin Trudeau. Well, that's a super rich get away with a free ride, while the Democrats are committed to making sure they pay their fair share and invest in people. But that applies to Aaron O'Toole just as well. He voted against our measure to tax the ultra rich, to tax companies like Amazon that make record profits in a pandemic, but pay virtually no tax here. I can't imagine why anyone would vote against that. And so if people are worried about who pays the price of this pandemic, which I think are all Canadians, the choice is clear. Both Justin Trudeau and Aaron O'Toole don't think that billionaires should pay their fair share. The Democrats do believe they should pay their fair share. And with that fair share, we can invest in people and the help that they need. Look, those are certainly new Democrat measures, but let's be clear. That's what Aaron O'Toole is saying. Let's look at what he's done. In Parliament, we've got just a couple months ago, we've got evidence of what he's done. He teamed up with Justin Trudeau to vote against removing for-profit care from long-term care. Effectively, both Justin Trudeau and Aaron O'Toole voted for private care when it comes to long-term care. We're against that. Both Aaron O'Toole and Justin Trudeau voted not to tax the ultra-rich. We have a different position. We believe in making sure they pay their fair share. We also put forward an idea around pharmacare. So these are not ideas of Aaron O'Toole just announcing things. This is where he votes. This is what he stands for. When we said, let's expand our healthcare to include pharmacare, which is what some of the Canadians broadly support, he teamed up with Justin Trudeau to vote against pharmacare, making it clear in each of those instances, he would rather protect the ultra wealthy than workers. So he might say what he wants right now in the campaign, but what did he do when he had a chance to vote? He voted for the interests of the super rich against workers. A really important question and something that we're also really committed to. Uh, we need to make sure that everyone in our country has access to affordable and, and high-speed internet. And that speaks, that's particularly important for indigenous communities, rural and remote communities. When we're driving, I drive on the 401 a lot, uh, between, uh, I used to, especially when I was going to school in, in Western, between Windsor and London, and even on the 401, you'll have moments where your internet disconnects. Uh, if you're in, you know, different edges of cities, uh, your internet might not be there. But we know rural communities have literally very little, and many are still on dial-up, uh, very little access to high-speed internet. And remote communities and indigenous communities have almost none. This is this is a massive problem because, as you mentioned, for people now, this is not this is not a luxury. This is about work. This is about education. This is about accessing services. So we need to take it seriously. We're we're committed to using our public resources to look at this as a public investment in infrastructure to support communities that have been left behind. And I think we need to look at it the same way we look at building roads and bridges. We need to look at building the infrastructure to connect people with high-speed internet the same way.